Southampton make their move. Coventry go Japanese and there's a big return at Ipswich. Swansea grab a striker, another face in at Bristol City and two at Preston. Here is the latest in the championship transfer window. Well, Leicester laid down the gauntlet with Cody and Winks and Southampton have replied with their first two signings of the summer. One, a familiar face and a no-brainer. The other, a big fee and a bit more of a gamble. The gamble is for Shea Charles, a 19-year-old Manchester City Academy graduate who arrives for a reported 10.5 million uh, with another four or five million of add-ons on top. Why is it a gamble? Well, apart from the fact he's only 19, Charles has about half an hour of first team Premier League experience with City as well as eight caps for Northern Ireland. The gamble, therefore, is that the Manchester City Academy has produced a player of similar quality to those around that particular first team squad. If that's the case, then the fee will go on to look perfectly reasonable. We all know, though, that when stepping out of the academy system into real first team football, there are absolutely no guarantees. And that fee almost demands that Shea Charles ultimately becomes a regular Premier League player one way or another for that fee to be good value. My take on the deal, yes, it is a big fee, but I'm sure Saints know everything there is to know about the player and are fairly certain that he's going to be the full package. If I couldn't get in at City and wanted a good club, then dropping a level and playing midfield for a team expected to dominate possession most weeks one level away from the Premier League would probably make perfect sense. Look, I have to address it every time as it's definitely coming up in the comments, but of course we all understand a championship club spending over 10 million quid for a 19 year old who's never started a game in English football does again outline the ridiculous chasm between sides in the same division that have access to Premier League broadcast money and sides that don't. Look, usual plea from me, you know how it goes, don't hate the player, hate the game. The relegated sides aren't solely responsible for the way the system works and its flaws. Conversely, what goes around comes around, so do try and behave with humility when your club is the one with access to way more resources than the other 90% of the league they're in. The other Saints signing, the no-brainer, that is Ryan Manning on a free. Over 200 championship appearances, he was with Russ Martin over at Swansea, very comfortable on the ball, used to his manager's style. Left back, left wing back. Martin even had fun playing at centre back last season. I don't think I need to say any more. Absolute no-brainer. Please indulge me. We're going to head to Ipswich next where George Hurst has returned from Leicester for a reported 1.5 million. Now I know this one will split opinion right down the middle as if football fans need any help with that. And if we're all going to be honest, nobody is going to be right or wrong in this conversation until the end of the season. The two sides to the Hurst argument are as follows. On the positive side, he came to Ipswich on loan last season, was really good, slipped into the system perfectly and scored at very important times in important games during Ipswich's winning streak on the way to promotion. On the negative side, Hurst has been on loan at Rotherham and Blackburn in the Championship before and not scored a single goal. Now, you could argue that at Rotherham, he was playing on the side that ultimately went down. And during his time at Blackburn, they were going through that weird phase of their data saying one thing and their results saying the other. What you can't argue is that he hasn't scored any goals and he's therefore unproven at championship level. Leaving my bias completely over at the door, this is probably the best way for Hurst to re-enter the championship, i.e. with a team he just got promoted from League One with. Am I expecting him to bash in 20 plus goals next season? No, but I don't imagine given the timing and circumstances now of this move that he's gonna draw the same blank he has in championship land before. Now, from an unproven championship striker to a proven championship striker, and we're talking about Jerry Yates, who's joined up at Swansea with their new boss, Mike Duff from Blackpool. Yates came up with Paul from League One, eight goals in championship season one, but impressively, 14 last season in a team that got relegated and had three managers during the campaign. Surely he is going to get goals. We are very much on the striker merry-go-round here with Swans hitman Joel Pirro being linked with a couple of those parachute teams. Now, 
Whether this is a preemptive strike by Swansea, if that deal does go through, getting Yates in, we're going to find out soon enough. It'd be nice if they could keep both of them, though, wouldn't it? It does feel now with Ellis Sims and Jerry Yates deals done, it's only really Sam Surridge at Forest, who's been mentioned with plenty of clubs, still available and in that particular bracket of proven championship striker. Commentary are continued to spend the Victor Jokerez money that they haven't got yet, but is clearly on the way. I keep saying this about Kov. This is where they need to go full Brentford now and knock it out of the park with the next batch of the incomings on the money they've worked so hard to raise from their good recruitment before. They are now going in to that slightly more expensive bracket too, which with higher risk may yield higher rewards. Joining Ellis Sims into the CBS is 26-year-old Japanese international Tatsuhiro Sakamoto, described by Mark Robbins as a creative attacking midfielder. Now, I won't pretend to know about the player too much, but obviously I've very much grown to trust the Coventry recruitment this past few years. We think it's a couple of million laid down. Again, it's that Belgian market that Burnley so brilliantly nailed last season. Looks a fun one to me, and we'll see if he fits in alongside Gustavo Harmer or, well, the other option. Jason Knight is in at Bristol City, returning to the Championship after one year in League One with Derby. Knight was one of that group bought through under Wayne Rooney in austerity Derby at Pride Park, and is signing number four in at Ashton Gate in what looks like a decent window there. I have always liked Knight, actually, my kind of player, and I mean this in the nicest way possible. He very much reminds me of the quote, let runners run and let players play. Stick him in your midfield. Is he going to dictate the play and run the game? No, that's not his thing. Is he going to glue everything together with sound fundamentals and a brilliant engine? Absolutely. We're kind of assuming that Bristol City are spending the money that they're about to get for Alex Scott. He's still there, but it looks like Bournemouth are getting a little bit keener with every passing day with their approaches. We're expecting that to be a big one as well if it does get done. Two in up at Preston, and again, like at Southampton, one very familiar, one less so. I probably don't need to tell anyone who's been watching the championship about Dwayne Holmes, dynamic pint-sized midfielder, spent the last five years in the division with Derby and Huddersfield. He will slot straight in and know exactly what is expected of him. Mads Frokjar Jensen, though, I know less about. 23-year-old Danish number 10, or maybe inside left by my understanding. Now, he joins fellow Dane Emil Rees at Preston, who's shown signs of good potential, but out with a long-term injury. What I'm saying is this is a market Preston have tried before and had some success with. One more, Connor Hazard in to Plymouth in goal. He joins from Celtic for a reported about 150 grand. Now, if you know anything about how Plymouth got promoted from League One last season, you'll know they've got a really good keeper in Michael Cooper, but Cooper has been out, I think since January, February time, with a long-term injury. Not entirely sure on the timescales there, but look, even if Hazard starts with that first team shirt, I'd imagine it's going to be quite hard to keep as and when Cooper is healthy again. Let me know your thoughts on all or any of those deals down there in the comments. And do stick with the channel. Click here to see a few names you might not yet know, but you will soon enough. Here is my 10 young players to watch in next season's EFL Championship.